Do magnets stick to stainless steel? How well? Let's test and find out. Two thicknesses of regular low carbon steel, one piece of 316 stainless steel, two thicknesses of 304 stainless steel, and two thicknesses of 430 stainless steel. This is a neodymium magnet. It's a D6C. That's a 3 8 inch diameter, 3 quarter inch long. It's a strong little magnet. I can pick up this piece of steel through my finger. Or pretty easily. And 316 stainless. Not even a little bit. How about 304 stainless? Seems like nothing. Of course, I do also have this piece of 304 stainless. It's from some bar stock. And it, it has a little bit, but it seems to be only at the edges. There's this stuff. Nothing. That's a mystery. The last two are 430 stainless steel. And then, of course, is a magnetic stainless steel. How does using that ferritic stainless steel affect the pull force? The answer depends on what material you're using, but also on the size of the magnet, the thickness of the steel, and the geometry of the whole setup. Let's measure a few to see what we can find out. Let's consider a modestly sized disc magnet, this 5 8 inch diameter by 8 inch thick disc. For a baseline, we recorded the pull force to a big, thick steel plate. This is just like our pull force case one. For this particular magnet, we measured about 7.7 .7 pounds. 7.7. .7. If we stick the same magnet to a thinner piece of regular steel, we see less pull force. This thin 24 gauge sample measured just 3.7 pounds, quite a bit less. To a piece of thicker 16 gauge regular steel, we see 7.7 the full strength. Now on to the thinner 430 stainless steel, and we measured just over three pounds for the thin steel. The thicker stainless tested to 7.4, almost the same as the regular steel. Both stainless steel pieces give us slightly weaker pull force. It looks weaker for the thinner steel. Is this always true? Let's test a different magnet and see. Here we're testing a much larger magnet. This powerful disc is one inch in diameter by half inch thick. Pulling to the thick steel test plate, it reaches almost 44 pounds. To the thin regular steel, we see almost nine pounds. To the thicker regular steel, we recorded about 24 pounds. to the thin stainless steel, eight pounds, over 10% weaker than the regular steel. To the thick stainless steel, about 19 and a half pounds, almost 20% weaker than regular steel. What's going on here? The stainless is always weaker, but how much weaker varies. There isn't an obvious rule of thumb from these measurements.
let's take a deeper look at what's going on here. The left side of this image shows two magnetic field pictures. The top one is that smaller magnet sticking to a thin steel sheet, while the lower one shows the same magnet sticking to a stainless steel sheet. Two things can be seen in these pictures. One, the regular steel on top reaches a higher field strength. There's more purple in there. And two, above the edge of the magnet, where the field is strongest, some magnetic field leaks out the other side. For the stainless, it looks like it leaks more. The magnetic field on top of the stainless covers a bigger area with more strength. On the right are magnetization curves for the two materials. The horizontal axis along the bottom represents the strength of some external magnetic field we apply to a piece of steel. The vertical axis shows what we might see in the material when exposed to that field. Imagine what happens if we stick these steel samples into a room with a uniform magnetic field of, say, 300 Ersten. This means we might expect to see a field strength of almost 20,000 Gauss inside the regular steel. Inside the stainless steel, it's weaker, perhaps just over 15,000 Gauss. If we apply even stronger fields, moving to the right on that graph, we see that our stainless curve never reaches the regular steel curve. The stainless saturates at a lower strength. You might be thinking, great, all I have to do is figure out at what point on these curves I'm operating at, and I'll be able to say all sorts of things about how it behaves. Sadly, we've never found it that simple. Even for this simple setup, with one magnet sticking to a steel sheet, the answer varies depending on where you look. Points close to the center line of the magnet are operating lower down on the curves. It climbs higher as we approach the edge of the magnet, where edge effects create the strongest field. At the edge, this thin steel is definitely saturated. As you move farther away from the magnet, it drops back down. We created these images using a computer simulation, or finite element analysis. The computer uses these curves to solve for every point in our study, in the magnet, in the steel, in the air around it, but it's not something we can compute on the back of a napkin. So, do magnets stick to stainless steel? Yes, if you use the right kind. Regular steel might provide a little more pull force, but ferritic stainless steels can perform nearly as well. 430 stainless steel is a great choice if you need something magnetic, but with better corrosion protection. Just be wary about the kinds of stainless that are not magnetic at all.